Hi guys, Leo here. Today we are going to learn about GitHub personal access tokens and how to use them in three different ways to solve the GitHub password authentication issue. Let's get started. Great, here we are. Before we say anything, let's first take a glance at the Git documentation to find out what personal access tokens are and why we need them. We don't need to read through all this, it says a bunch of things here, but if we read through the first paragraph, it says that personal access tokens are an alternative to using passwords for authentication to GitHub when using the GitHub API or the command line. Now you might have realized that if you try to clone your repository from your GitHub account into your local system and you impute the password you use to set up your GitHub account, it's not going to work. Now why is that so? GitHub set this up as a security feature so that you don't have to keep sending your username and your password across the internet whenever you are cloning your repository. Rather, they make you generate an access token which you can easily revoke if you feel like someone has gotten access to your account without changing your password. So it's a really effective way of keeping your um, system secure. Now let's try it out and see how it works. This is my GitHub account. You can check me out by the way, the Leo. I already logged in into my GitHub account. <clears throat> If you do not have a GitHub account, just go to github.com and set up an account with them. It's pretty simple and straight to the point. So when you open your GitHub account, you can easily create a repository by clicking on your avatar over here, going to repositories. And over here, you can just click on this and create a new repository. Now for the purpose of our studies, I already created two of them, RepoTest2 and RepoTest, which we are going to use to learn how to generate personal access tokens. Let's start with RepoTest and see how it goes. Now this is the default screen for an empty repository. It means that there is nothing in here really. So what we are going to try to do is that we are going to clone this repository, this empty repository into my local system and let's see what requirements will be needed. So let's go straight into my terminal and try and do that. If you are a first time Git user, the first thing you want to do is to configure your Git with your username and email address. There are a lot more things you can do, but for now, let's just stick to configuring the username and the email address. Let's see how to do that. The command to use to do that is git config dash dash global user Then you enter your name in quotation marks. I'm going to enter my full name right here. What I usually tell my students when configuring their Git is to use their full name. Now, this is because you could be in a team with other developers in a collaborative environment and you may have the same first name as another developer. So you need a way to differentiate yourself from that other person. And now the easiest way to do that is to use your full name. If all of you happen to have the same full name, then you need a unique identifier so that when you push your commits to your GitHub and we run the Git log, of, Git log of the project, we can tell which developer made which commit. So this process is very important. You do not want to skip that. When you are done configuring your username, you can now configure your email address with a command git config dash dash global user dot email. Then you enter your email address. My email address is audit.lenard. one at gmail.com now when you are done configuring your username and your email address the next thing you want to do is to check if the configuration settings worked then the command to do that is git config l sorry i didn't add the git git config l as you can see i have my email address right here and I have my username configured, my full name configured. That is very important. So you want to take note of that. So now that we have our Git configured, let's just go ahead and try to clone this repo test repository to our local system. I'm going to, I'm going to copy the URL and then go back to my terminal. The command to clone a repository is git clone. Then you paste the URL and I just enter. As you can see, it says that you appear to have cloned into an empty repository. That is perfectly normal because like I told you, this is the default screen for an empty repository. Now back in our terminal, we're going to create a file in this repository and try to push it to GitHub and then let's see what happens. Before that, let me change directory into this repo. 
Now I'm going to create a file and try to push to GitHub and see what happens. Let's create a file and call it index.html. Let's add it to Git. Let's commit it with a message initial commit. Now I'm going to try to push it to GitHub and let's see what happens. Git push. And as you can see, it requires my username. My username is the Leo, as we already know. Now look at this. It says that password for the Leo, which is my GitHub, GitHub account. I'm going to try to enter the password which I used to set up my GitHub account. And you're going to realize that it's not going to work. So I'm just going to enter the password. Now take note that when you enter the password, nothing is going to show. But just type it in and enter. Now look at what it says. Support for password authentication was removed on August 13, 2021. This means that if you try to push your changes to Git with your GitHub account password, it's not going to work anymore. They took that out from August 2021. And I already explained why that is so for security purposes. So instead of using our password, what you want to use is what is known as the personal access token. Let's go find out how to generate that. Then we'll try and push again to GitHub and use the personal access token. And it's going to work this time around. To generate a personal access token, just log in into your GitHub account and click on your avatar over here at the top right corner. Come to settings. Then scroll all the way down to developer settings. Then to personal access tokens. Now, as you can see, there are fine grained tokens and classic tokens. In another video, I'm going to explain the difference between these two. However, for now, let's stick to the classic token. As you can see, I've already generated a couple of tokens which I've used for other projects in the past. If you never generated a personal access token, you might not see the screen. But what you need to do is to click on this button, generate new token, and then once again, stick to the classic token. Great. Over here, you want to give the token you want to generate a description. We're just going to call it test token. Then you set the expiration date. How long do you want the token to be valid for? If you set it for 30 days, it means after 30 days, the token cannot be used anymore. Either you have to regenerate or you cannot log in into that project. You cannot push and pull um, from GitHub. So for the purpose of this tutorial, we're going to choose seven days. I'm going to delete it right after this tutorial, by the way, because your personal access token is an alternative password. Anyone with access to that token can actually log in into your project and pull and push depending on the kind of permissions that you are given regarding that token. Now, when I speak of permissions, I'm talking about the scopes over here. Everything you see over here refers to the scopes. If you want to read more about what these things mean, you can do that with this link over here. Now, for you guys at ALX, you want to check everything just so that if you're pushing and pulling changes from GitHub for future projects, you're not going to have any problem. You really don't need all these things, but just for the purpose of not running into challenges in the future. So just check everything and then generate token down here. Great. After your token is generated, you're going to see a random string on your screen. The first thing you want to do is to copy this token and then paste it somewhere. Because the moment you exit this screen, you are not going to return to your token again. You cannot have it again. So copy the token and then paste it somewhere. You're not going to lose it. And this time around, let's clear the screen. Our space to work with. When I try to clone, when I try to push to um, GitHub and it requires the password, I'm going to enter the personal access token instead of my GitHub password. Let's try to do that one more time. So I'm going to git push. It requires my username, which is the Leo. And it says password for the Leo. Then I enter my GitHub password access token, personal access token, sorry. It's not going to show, just enter. And bam, as you can see, it worked perfectly. We've been able to push to our GitHub. However, this is not the best way to do it because whenever you want to push and pull changes from your GitHub, it's going to require that you enter your username and access token. And it's kind of boring and repetitive. So what you want to do is to use the second way. Now, the second way of doing it, which is much better than the first way, is to configure your Git with your personal access token so that when you're pulling and pushing to GitHub, it is not going to require that all the time. Then how do you do that? Let's create a file and let's call it touch. Let's call it, um, let's say app.css. Then let's try to push it to GitHub. Don't worry if you do not understand all these commands yet. We'll talk about them in other videos. So I add and I commit. Now, 
now i'm about to push to my github but before i i do that i want to configure my git so that i do not have to keep entering my personal access token over and over and the command to do that is git config Let me minimize that a bit so that we can see it properly. Great. So the command is git config dash dash global credential dot helper cache. Then you enter. Then now when you try to push to your GitHub, it's going to require your username and password one last time. The next time you try to do it, it will not require it again. So let's try to push to GitHub. And of course, it's going to require my username. I enter the Leo. Then when we cross my password, I copy my personal access token and just put it in one last time and I enter and it works. So I'm going to create another file and try to push to GitHub and let's see if it's going to require the access token again. So let's touch and create a file. Let's call it up to dot by let's get add get commit just random commit message for the purpose of our tutorial. Then I'm going to try to push to my GitHub account, git push. And as you can see, it did not require my password or access token anymore because I've configured it with my Git. Now there is a third and final way, which is the easiest and the best. So let's get to it. Now for the third way, I'm going to try to clone this repository, repo test2. As you can see, it's an empty repository. So I'm going to copy its URL and go into my terminal. Let me see the out of here. I'm going to git clone paste the link now before you enter what you want to do is to copy your access token and then add it to the clone link before you enter and it's pretty straight to the to the point so let's copy our access token now you're going to insert it right over here after your https after the second forward slash just paste your access token over here so it's gonna read get clone https for slash then you paste your access token over here then at github.com then that's the url link now what we, we are doing here right now is that we are adding our access token to the clone link which is right over here and you are indicating to the terminal that it is at github.com so once we have done this let's just enter and then try to push to GitHub. I've cloned into an empty repository. Let's create a file. Let's call it index.html. Git add. Git. Oh, sorry about that. I did not cd into the repo. Let me just cd into it. Great. Now we are inside the repo. So let's create a file and call it index let's get out commit let's just give it a random commit message just for our purposes then let's try and push it to github now and see what happens it did not require my username it did not require my personal access token because it's already configured into git and this is the easiest way of doing it all right, guys, that's it for today. These are the comments that I used. You can just pause the video and then screenshot or write them down just to be able to use them. Now, by the way, this is the command that you use just in case you want to unset your git. This command right here, git config dash dash global dash dash unset credential dot helper. Just in case you feel someone has gotten access to your token and you want to reset your git and enter a new token, that is what you do. Just run that command git config dash dash global dash dash unset credential dot helper and you um, are going to reset your git and github to enter a new token with that that's it for today if you do not want to miss future videos that are upcoming and i'm going to be helping you with your future projects do want to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell and if you have any comments or any topic you want me to handle in the future don't hesitate to drop them in the comments below happy coding guys see you soon